<laughs> oh yeah, like even when I was coming over here, you know, we took the subway. There's just flags all on every subway train, you know, flags everywhere. Always when we're ready to... Uh... I'm Woody Harrelson and I'm sitting here with Howard Zinn and uh, I have to say, Howard, that um, I have very few heroes. And I have gotten to meet, like, you know, some people who I really admire, Jack Nicholson and Brando, and hang out with different people over the years, and you know, Paul McCartney. But uh, to meet you is really, I'm meeting a, uh, one of my true heroes, and I, I'm, it's a real honor to be here with you, Howard. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad to be associated with Marlon Brando and Jack Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, so I have to now. I have to say something nice about you, right? <laughs> no, it's not required. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say anything nice about you. I'm just going to say why I, w I was excited to come here and finally meet you and spend time with you and talk with you. And that is that uh, I go to the movies a lot. My wife and I go to the movies a lot. We see a lot of bad movies. And uh, when we saw White Men Can't Jump. Uh, we both absolutely knocked out, and you know, it was a great movie. Yeah. And you, you know, you were pretty good in it. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. and uh, and then saw you in a couple of other things. But okay, so you were another good actor, interesting actor. But then more, I, but I had no idea that you were a person who was interested in the world. You know, there are actors who don't seem to be interested in the world. You know. They, you never hear anything from them about what's going on, you know. They're interviewed on TV and all they do is talk about the movies they're in. And, and then I, uh, what, how did I know this? I saw an article that appeared on the internet, the way things magically appear. An article that you had written for the Guardian of London you apparently were in London doing a play, and you wrote this article for The Guardian about the war going on. And I read that, and I said, wow, this guy <laughs> yeah. is interested in the world. He's interested in war, he's interested in peace. It's a wonderful article. And so that gave me a you know, wholly new idea about you. And then, uh, I don't know how it happened, we started communicating by email, and... Uh, yeah, I think Barbara was the conduit, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah, there was some Your intermediary there, some kind person who put us together. And so uh, it's, it's a pleasure for me, really. Well, I you know it's been uh, quite a number of decades that you've been uh, speaking out about the uh, American uh, practices of going to war for... Mm -hmm whatever reasons they mm. tend to go to war for, which tends to be uh, land and uh, resources and so forth. But so, uh, you know, for me, uh, my first introduction to you was back in the Bush War I. Mm. I uh, on the face of it, I saw that it was unjust, and I went to UCLA at the time, and uh, I... Anyway, there were cameras, and so I said I thought it was a crazy thing, and it really uh, received quite a lot of uh, negative reaction. And, um, of course, that only made me want to find out more about what I was talking about. And I read People's History of the United States, and, uh, you know, I thought that the United States maybe had just more or less recently gone off track mm -hmm. or, you know, been kind of co-opted by right. these forces. What I didn't realize is that yeah. from the very beginning, from when Columbus uh, met the mm -hmm. Arawaks, there was, it was just non-stop um, violence and, uh, and uh, just taking over their bullying people and taking over their resources and... Uh, so, most people don't really understand about the history mm -hmm. of uh, what has gone down. Now, I think people's history of the United States should be required reading in every high school. 
Well, I'm sure they're all listening to you. <laughs> Tomorrow it will be required reading. Uh, it is used in a lot of high schools and colleges. Used, and uh, um, it's interesting. It started out, uh, when it first came out, which was like 20 years ago, that's how old this book is, you know. When it started out, it was like an underground book in high schools, you know, because high schools are totalitarian places. You know, high schools, you know, teachers are... Uh, watched carefully. What do you do? What do you use? What textbook? You know. So my book, they, they couldn't really use my book officially. They would sort of photocopy parts of it. It was like you know, what they used to do in Russia with the underground <laughs> Samis that they used to call it. And uh, but over the years, it's become more and more. I hate to say the word respectable. Uh, acceptable, you know, <laughs> even though I haven't changed it, I haven't made it more respectable. It has the same I ideas, but and so now it's used a lot in, in high schools, which I'm glad to see because young people, you know, and you know the what you just said is what I hear again and again. You know, the people, uh, a lot of people are surprised when they go into the history of the United States because, you know, just like you said. Um, they think, well, this is bad, and sometimes they use the word aberration. They say, oh, this is unusual, this is different. You know, this is not the way we usually are. We're really the good guys. Well, that's, if they knew our history, they wouldn't, they wouldn't say that. But, you know, people are reluctant to accept the fact that we have not been the good guys of the world. People don't want to think that. I didn't want to think that. I didn't want to think that. I wanted to think the United States is, you know, we're the Boy Scouts of the world. You know, we help countries across the street, you know, wh whatever Boy Scouts do, you know. Uh, <laughs> that's what I thought. And, uh, and it's only when I started to read history that I realized, no, this goes way back. The drive to conquer, to expand, to control. And when you know that history, if you know that history, you're not going to be deceived uh, as easily, because if you don't know the history, it's as if you were born yesterday. If you were born yesterday, the president gets up there in front of the microphone and says, uh, we've got to go to war for freedom, for democracy. And if you don't know the history, well, he's the president. He knows, <laughs> you know. But, you know, like you said, when you go into history, it uh, makes you see what's going on today in a different perspective. Most people, I think, are kind of aware that this is an oil war. Certainly around the world, mm -hmm. people understand that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which, it's interesting when you say oil war, you kind of, uh, you're, you're stating the top two industries in reverse or order. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so, I, I just wanted to ask you, but the, not being aware of the roots of it, you know, they don't see, like, for example, one of the things that really pissed me off was when I heard George uh, Bush the Elder, as they call him, say something to the effect after Bush War One that uh, we that the United States had been redeemed, uh, had redeemed Vietnam. Do you remember him making a statement yeah, like that? Yeah, I, yeah. I remember, I remember. <laughs> that yeah. I found really, really <laughs> yeah. hard to swallow yeah. because, like most people, don't yeah. know that two million people were killed in Vietnam, and they don't know that 4.5 million people were killed in Korea either, mostly civilians. So, what's your take on that kind of thing? You no, know, it's interesting about Bush saying that because you know they talked about and Bush talked about the Vietnam syndrome. The Viet, they, they use that expression, the Vietnam syndrome. Syndrome is something you use to describe a sickness, <laughs> you know. <Right. laughs> I don't know. A syndrome, a sickness. And what do they mean by that? They meant that Vietnam was a time when people in the United States organized themselves into a movement, and a movement of protest, a movement which they began to question the, the policies of the United States.